Toyota Venza cannot be called a favorite of the Russian market. And it officially appeared with us only in 2013, and left quietly and imperceptibly at the beginning of 2016, and for all three years the model remained in the advertising shadow of its cousin named Highlander. But almost 10,000 cars were sold, which regularly appear on the secondary market. Is it worth taking a look at them? The name Venza is obtained by crossing two words, venture, venture, adventure, undertaking, undertaking, and Monza. I hope that people who regularly read the automotive press do not need to explain what the Monza circuit is and what it is famous for. The idea of bringing to the US market an affordable car that would combine the advantages of a crossover, station wagon, and minivan really looked like a risky venture. Nevertheless, by 2008, at the Toyota Technical Center in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and at the company's California Design Bureau, all work on the westernization of the local Harrier model, which already had a global brother of the Lexus brand, namely the Model RX Generation AL10. The novelty, which received the factory code AV10, was shown at NAIAS in Detroit in January 2008, and in the fall its serial production started at the company's plant in Georgetown, Kentucky. A car built on the Toyota K platform, along with Camry, Avalon, Previa, Highlander, Alford, as well as Lexus ES and RX, turned out to be technically quite simple. Both front and rear suspension, McPherson struts, rack and pinion steering with electric power. The model was produced both in a front-wheel drive version and with an automatically connected all-wheel drive. There were two engines available, a 3.5-liter gasoline V6 2G RFE with a capacity of 268 horsepower and 182 horsepower inline 4.1 ARFE with a volume of 2.7 liters. They were paired with six-speed Eisen automatic machines of the U660E series on 3.5 engines and parts of 2.7 and U760E only on 2.7. At the end of 2012, Toyota carried out a restyling, which mainly affected the optional content of the model. The updated Venza was demonstrated at the New York Auto Show, and simultaneously with the start of sales in the United States, a decision was made to start official deliveries of the car to the Russian Federation. At the same time, the first Venza in our country appeared back in 2009, immediately after the start of sales in America they were imported by gray dealers. It should be noted that the plant in Georgetown remained the only enterprise from where Venza came both to the North American markets and for export, including to China. At the same time, already Europeanized cars came to Russia with lighting equipment adapted to our standards and a number of other changes in equipment. We sold only versions with a 2.7 liter engine and mostly with all wheel drive. Despite the restyling, sales of the Venza never reached their targets, and in 2015 sales of the car in the United States were discontinued. In the Russian Federation, the termination of sales was announced in January 2016. The company considered it unprofitable to continue importing this model in the context of another crisis. However, in the secondary market, the model is in steady demand and has a fairly high liquidity. Owners are in no hurry to get rid of the car and change it to something else. Prices for Toyota Venza start at 1 million rubles for 2009 to 2010 cars brought from the USA and end at 2 million for an officially purchased 2015 car with relatively low mileage and a transparent dealer history. In general, buying such a car in the secondary market for 1.3 to 1.7 million rubles may turn out to be a completely rational decision. Not so long ago, we already talked in detail about what problems a person who decides on such a risk venture may face. Well, now let's see what its owners write about this car. Hate number 5, Car Class It is worth noting that Venza is not a crossover in the usual sense of the word, and even more so, it is not an SUV. This is a cross-country wagon, which, however, many still refer to the crossover segment, but as a separate subclass. But unlike the classic representatives of this subclass, such as the Volvo XC70, Audi All-Road, and Subaru Outback, which used the bodies of ordinary passenger station wagons, Toyota designers made a new body on the same platform, but not with off-road, but with lightweight proportions. The creators of the Mercedes R-Class went the same way at one time. 
and here lies a certain ambush. Buyers of classic crossovers typically want their car to look and be practical like an SUV, but drive like a passenger car. Buyers of off-road station wagons, UPP, so that their passenger car can do something off-road. As a result, Venza is somewhere in the middle. In general, neither fish nor meat, but a miracle you know fish whale. By the way, in one of the reviews, the author wrote, Venza resembles some big good whale or sperm whale. But in itself, the balance of qualities, given by belonging to the class of SCP, is not suitable for everyone. Love number five, cost of ownership. In many reviews, their authors mentioned that they opted for the Toyota Venza looking for an anti-crisis option since it turned out to be too expensive to maintain a Range Rover or VW Touareg in conditions of economic instability. And it's not about the initial cost, for the Toyota Highlander U40 of the same years of production in the secondary market, they ask for almost the same amount. That's just Highlander, the 3.5 liter V6 and 273 horses under the hood with the corresponding level of transport tax. In many areas, it will amount to more than 40,000 rubles. Tax on the 182 horsepower Venza, less than 10,000. Let's go further. Venza has a low attractiveness for hijackers, which means that Casco for this model is cheaper, and if it really presses, then you can completely abandon this type of insurance. But the liquidity of Venza is quite large, and with age, the price of it falls rather slowly. Maintenance is not prohibitively expensive, and the car does not suffer from endless sudden breakdowns, however, we will return to this issue. Finally, Venza has a moderate appetite. Here, however, the opinions of the owners differ quite strongly. Some argue that in summer the consumption of gasoline on the highway is 7.5 to 8 L slash 100 kilometers, and in the city it remains within 10 to 11 liters per hundred. Others categorically deny this. Consumption 11 out of 100 is unrealistic. Do not deceive people considering this, still a good option, for purchase, under 15 out of 100 definitely. In some reviews, I even came across the figure of 18 L slash 100 kilometers. Nevertheless, in so many reviews, fuel efficiency is listed among the advantages of the model. Owners, who are not inclined to categorical assessments, explain this by saying that consumption always depends on driving style, and this is especially pronounced in the case of Venza. You drive calmly along the highway, within the framework of traffic rules, you get 7.5 to 8 liters. You drive faster than 140, you perceive the rear dimensions of any car as an invitation to overtake, get those same 15, 16, or even 18 liters per hundred. A similar picture is in the city, if you vomit in the stream, then you will definitely meet 10 L slash 100 kilometers, you will constantly vomit from traffic lights and generally blame all the money, the car will eat three throats. And the cost of owning Venza slightly increases the cost of rubber installed on it. Try to find tires of dimension 255-45 or 19 cheaper than 11 to 12,000 rubles per wheel, but popular models will cost 70 to 75,000 rubles per set. Hate number four, urban operation, dimensions, turning radius, consumption. In many reviews of the Toyota Venza, there is the definition of controversial. Indeed, there is a certain inconsistency. On the one hand, Venza is an urban family car, and it is for operation mainly in the city that they buy it. On the other hand, in the city both dimensions and a large turning radius interfere with it. Many people mention this contradiction, but they evaluate it very differently. Some write that they don't feel any problems with the dimensions, they say, they got used to it quickly, since it's not the first such suitcase, but others mention the dimensions and lack of maneuverability among the serious disadvantages. This parameter is especially significant for families where both spouses drive a car. My wife did not like the car in terms of control and dimensions, since we live in the center of ST and didn't sit down. There are other factors complicating urban operation, a rather high consumption in a ragged mode of dense urban traffic, which we have already talked about, and some design features that we will discuss later. Love number four, interior and trunk volume, comfort. What should be a family car? 
I will not be mistaken if I assume that very many will answer that it is voluminous and roomy. And here the reviewers present Venza in the most favorable light. The salon is gigantic, larger than in the Prado or Touareg. There is even more space in the back for passengers than in a Range Rover, only with a Mercedes ES Class can be compared, and this is not a joke. You can sit cross-legged behind the front passenger. In the back row, kids can just walk between the seats. Three full-fledged child seats fit easily. In front, it feels like more space than in the Lexus RX. For rear passengers, real comfort, the central tunnel, of course, spoils the situation a little, but, say, two adults and fairly strong men, plus one teenager of 17 years old, will feel comfortable. There are many such statements. In particular, in a number of reviews, the owners emphasize that small passengers sitting in child seats in the back row do not reach the backs of the front seats with their feet and do not get them dirty, and someone says that after a trip in the back seat, a comrade, a respectable man 190 centimeters tall, compared his feelings with flying in business class. Pleases the owners and the volume of the trunk. Someone says that when traveling to the Crimea with three children, everything got into the trunk, including a not at all small stroller. Someone notes that three huge suitcases can easily fit there. Well, if you fold the back sofa, then you can transport everything in general, from nine wheels for tire fitting to three doors or a bed for a country house under construction. Lovers of outdoor recreation are not offended either. The trunk includes an assembled double boat 3M long, a 5 horsepower outboard motor, 3 life jackets, a 10 liter cauldron, a 30 liter canister, 4 sleeping bags and 4 backpacks of 70 liters each and this is only half of the luggage compartment, of course, without the curtain. In many reviews, the authors emphasize that the advantages of the Venza Salon are most fully revealed on long trips. Everything is in place here very comfortable seats in which you can spend more than one hour without any problems and overcome a thousand and a half kilometers and an abundance of places to store small things including a 14 liter box armrest that has a refrigerator function and folding tables in the backs of the front seats allowing you to easily feed the children on the route naturally in the car you can get a lodging for the night finally we can note the excellent filling with a wide variety of functions that increase comfort when I saw the car in the ad, I thought it was in the maximum configuration, since it had double glazing, hatches, a trunk closer, a driver's seat with memory that drives off when you exit, but it turned out that this is an average option. Someone may call the Venza Salon simple, but many are ready to describe it exclusively in enthusiastic terms. I am sitting and relaxing to the impression is that I am lounging on my favorite sofa in front of the telly. A chic comfortable chair, light high quality leather with even stitching, dark wood inserts, chrome elements, a panoramic roof, an awesomely comfortable rear sofa, a giant salon, in short, full of luxury. The automatic transmission lever is an elegant nickel-plated pin topped with a wooden leather knob. I want to constantly touch and stroke. Many reviews specifically mention the panoramic glass roof. The panoramic roof is an ideal feature if you are traveling with children on a long journey, and in principle a nice thing if you simply want daylight in the cabin. Again, before going to bed in the car, you can admire the stars. Romance It is also worth noting that cars that were officially sold in the Russian Federation, as a rule, are richer equipped than those bought at American auctions and imported into the country before 2014. Such pleasant little things as a navigator were added, the audio system became better, there was a start of the engine from a button, an electric boot, lights in the door mirrors, an adaptive salon mirror. Hate number three, doors, mirrors, headlight washers. Venza also has not very pleasant features. For example, the design of doors. On the one hand, the doors that cover the sills are good, because when getting in and out in bad weather, the trousers will remain clean, despite the fact that the Venza is actually pretty dirty, and only the first two are visible through the rear window. Three days after washing. But when parallel parking, it can easily turn out that the doors cannot be opened, since they rest against the curb. In many reviews, the authors make claims against the side mirrors. First, they are small and flat, much smaller than those usually found in crossovers and SUVs. 
Well, since it is customary for us to adjust the mirrors so that about a third of the mirror is occupied by the side of the car, huge blind zones are formed in the side mirrors in which Cam AZ will fit. As a treatment for this problem, it is proposed to install side mirrors from Toyota Avensis. And secondly, even top-end configurations do not have the function of automatic folding mirrors. If you want to fold the mirrors in a tight parking lot, be kind, run the car around with handles, handles. This causes natural bewilderment. How is it that a car for a million and a half does not have such an elementary function, while it is on a twice cheaper Oris? Here, apparently, the fact that the car was originally intended for the North American market effects, and there, as a rule, parking lots are quite spacious, and the function of folding mirrors is not very relevant. A funny situation has developed with the headlight washers. They simply don't exist on the Americans, and the owners are indignant. They say, it's a shame to give a million and then every 15 minutes of driving in the night rain with a rag to run to wipe the headlights. There are washers on cars from official deliveries, but even here everything is not thankful to God. The liquid is consumed too quickly, and it's a shame when you just wash the car, and then the nozzles come out and, along with the headlights, pour over your hood. On the forums, the owners share their experience on how to programmatically disable the automatic washer or how to build in a toggle switch to force this function to turn off. In addition, this model does not have a rain sensor, glass heating, even in the wiper rest area, which causes some irritation. After all, European models of a comparable price and class have it all. Well, there is no trunk release button on the trunk itself, only in the cabin or on the key fob. Love number three, security. So, a family car should be comfortable and voluminous so that everything you need can fit in it. And it should also be safe, because you carry the most important people in your life in it. At least, many of the owners of Toyota Venza think so. And in this regard, Venza does not deceive their expectations. The first thing I felt was security, massive doors, large racks, and most importantly, an incomprehensible sense of security that comes from. I have never seen anything like this. When you get into this car for the first time, you feel like in a tank and some kind of detachment from the outside world. And this is not just some subjective perception on a sensory level. The Venza received the highest possible five-star rating from the NHTSA, the U.S. National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, for a reason. Front impact, five stars each for driver and front passenger safety. Side impact, five stars each for driver and rear passenger safety. And only in the rollover test did the car get a four. And safety increases the very nature of the car. As the owners write, all the shortcomings of Venza are compensated by some positive energy and calmness emanating from it. You just want to roll imposingly in it, not hurrying anywhere, not thinking about anything, scoring everything, not paying attention to pimply slickers who saddled a domestic manufacturer and imagined themselves to be at least Baricella, or to offended by life ghouls on rusty foreign cars, considering it is their duty to throw something out of the window onto the road, which will rather hang themselves than turn on the turn signal. I want to soar above the stream, and it almost works out. Hate number two, flotation, no lugs. According to the Toyota Venza's cross-country ability, all owners are quite clearly divided into two categories. The first, fortunately, rather small, group for some reason believed that they were buying a real Jeep, and therefore they were unpleasantly surprised when faced with the fact that the car had a rather modest off-road potential. The second group does not experience any disappointment, since initially they did not count on dealing with serious off-road conditions, but Venza is quite enough to successfully overcome any unpleasant surprises that you may encounter in the city or on the way to the country. The main weapon in the Venza's arsenal is 205mm of ground clearance. By the way, this is 10mm more than the RAV4, and this is enough in order not to suffer from powerlessness in the yard after a snowfall or to drive through a dry bumpy primer without any problems. Moreover, even front-wheel drive versions of the car have such capabilities, I have studded tires. Perhaps because of this, for three winters, I never got stuck anywhere and never regretted that I took the front-wheel drive. 
An automatically connected all-wheel drive with a viscous coupling will only help when driving on a slippery surface, but it will provide a chance to drive into a fairly steep climb on snow, sand, or gravel, but left. The second time I tried it smoothly, it started off without grinding, that is, all drive systems and anti-axle work. I drove into loose sand, stopped on the rise, gave gas at the car, without skidding and without growling at high speeds, calmly drove up. Nevertheless, according to the authors of the reviews, the car drives quite confidently both on snow and on gravel. It is a pleasure to drive in winter. It keeps the road chic. You can't go to the forest on it. It's not suitable for fishing or hunting, but it's easy to get off the road to the dacha or there. We climbed over rough terrain uphill, traveled on not very good roads in the regions. Well, any serious off-road exercises for Venza are strictly contraindicated, since the evacuation of a stuck car from a mud ambush is an almost impossible task. The fact is that Venza completely lacks towing eyes as a class, and the instruction manual says that evacuation is possible only by loading. Frankly, this circumstance is pretty unnerving for the owners. The complete absence of lugs for towing was very annoying. There were no problems, thank God, but I could get stuck somewhere. But you never know, I don't know what they would have pulled out for then. The absence of lugs can be an unpleasant surprise not only on off-road, but also on urban asphalt. Here, for example, is such a story, the alternator belt broke, fell under the crankshaft pulley, and smoked. Stopped at a crossroads. He opened the hood, looked, did not find anything burning, called a friend, he arrived in five minutes, took out a rope, and there was nothing to hook onto either the back or the front. In general, the two pushed us from the crossroads, bought a belt for 370 rubles, and they replaced it in 30 minutes. Love number two, stability on the road, dynamics, handling. In general, the behavior of the Venza on the road is more than positively assessed by the reviewers. The only thing is that some of them, though not all, complain about the lack of dynamics. They write that 2.7 liters and 185 horses move 2 tons somewhat sluggishly, that the car accelerates mediocrely, that the kick down is somehow thoughtful, you drive along the highway at 80 kilometers slash h, you stomp on the pedal while overtaking, the engine roars like a wounded hippopotamus, the arrow flies up to the red zone, and nothing else happens. Acceleration begins after unbearably long seconds. But here, rather, unfulfilled expectations affect. Those who understood and accepted the nature of the car are absolutely calm about the fact that the car has a smooth and solid ride when you don't seem to be in a hurry, but you still drive fast enough. Yes, the car actively resists staggering and resists jerking on the road, but the power reserve of the 2.7 liter engine is enough for safe overtaking at a speed of 120 km slash h, even if the car is fully loaded. Auto handling of the car is a pleasant surprise. The owners write that in this car it is quite comparable to the VW Touareg, that driving feels like in a business class sedan, and that the main advantage of the Venza is its stable movement along a given trajectory. Even sharp turns are easy. In five years of driving I tried sometimes break it into a controlled skid, but it did not work. You can do this if you turn off the ESP, but I didn't take risks here, because it won't be easy to catch such a bath. Road holding, if not perfect, then almost. On a wet track, it enters into turns of 120 to 130 degrees at 100 kilometers slash h as if on rails, not the slightest hint of demolition. This stability is evident not only when driving in a straight line or in fast turns, but also in very extreme situations. Here is what, for example, one of the owners says, I had one case on the WHSD, I was driving 180 and, you see, I caught a side cut somewhere before the highway, the car shook sharply, but it kept going straight. I immediately went to the side of the road, got out and went nuts, there was a tire residue on the disc, there was a tread circle on top, and there was no side cord, but even despite this, the car did not lose controllability. All this in the complex only confirms that the Venza fits well into the definition of an ideal car for long trips with the family. Large, soft, it floats along the road like a ship, and all-wheel drive, high ground clearance, wide tires, and decent handling allow you to feel calm and comfortable on any road, moving at any distance. 
Heat number one, noise isolation. If not every first, then certainly every second Venza owner writes about the lack of sound insulation. True, the authors of the reviews do this not quite abusively, but the fact that the noise isolation of the model is SOSO, like that of most Japanese, is recognized by almost everyone. I realized that I got into soundproofing, it simply doesn't exist, and not even in comparison with the Lexus, but with the Camry or the official Jetta. First of all, according to the owners, it is worthwhile to install additional sound insulation in the door, the sound when closing is so shameful, and they are somehow light, how undignified it is horror. Secondly, you need to deal with the wheel arches, as usual, the most noise from the arches, but the same windows let in little noise, double glazed front ones. The third day I changed my shoes to winter tires, on dry asphalt the rumble is not weak, arches need to be done. Least of all claims to engine noise, the engine cannot be heard at all when driving quietly. The engine feels like it's electric instead of gas. There is a minus for the noise of the rear arches and the engine compartment, but this is fixable. The rear arches can be glued, and the engine, when it warms up, is almost inaudible. Many owners put additional sound insulation on their own. I pasted chunk of myself in the doors, hood, trunk lid, fenders, where I could get it. Of course, it's not very convenient without a ditch or a lift, the floor and the roof are left, until next summer and free time. I made Shumkov everything except the roof. Not to say that it has become deaf, like in a tank, but the noise level has become much lower, of course there is noise, but it has become less noticeable. Love number one, reliability. Is it any wonder that in the overwhelming majority of reviews, the quality that has become the trademark of the Toyota brand is named as the main advantage of the car? We say Toyota, we mean reliability. We say reliability, we mean Toyota. Evidence of this can be quoted almost endlessly. This is written by those who bought a car in official showrooms, and those who once ordered from gray dealers, and those who purchased it in the secondary market. I have owned this car for many years and never had any problems. For 50,000 kilometers, nothing broke, as they say, my car and do MOT. For five years, with a run of 100,000 kilometers, nothing has fallen down. For six years, with careful driving, replacement of racks and consumables. Mileage 160,000 kilometers during the time of owning a car, and this is seven years, I only changed oil, filters, fluids, pads, and once racks in a circle. Yes, for this car, 200,000 kilometers is not that much mileage. In one of the reviews, the author says that he met Venza at the car wash with a mileage of half a million. And in none of the reviews did I come across any mention of any serious problems with the engine. Only one of the owners mentioned the need to replace the rear crankshaft oil seal, which cost him 10,000 rubles. On the contrary, everyone in a voice asserts that the one ARFE motor can be called the standard of reliability, and that with proper maintenance, both the engine and the gearbox take care of 450 to 500,000 kilometers without any problems. The suspension is also distinguished by its endurance and very worthily walks along our mounds of pits, which, due to a misunderstanding, we call roads. I got into a hole, jumped on a bump, drove it to a technical center, I thought, con suspension. Nope. Even the collapse is not needed. Of course, Venza, like any model, has certain congenital sores and vulnerabilities. Most often, the reviews mention the appearance of a knock in the steering rack and power steering, which manifests itself when driving over small bumps. But the methods of dealing with this problem by the mechanics of specialized services have been fully developed. In general, Venza, like most Toyotas, is simple, even slightly archaic in some ways, but exceptionally reliable. And it is this reliability that has become a key component in the low cost of ownership.